Hello everybody, this is Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead coming to y'all today. Uh, with a wake up call. With a wake up call, that's exactly right. Um, Wanda and I, as y'all know, have had the course of events take place in our life here this past week that has caused us to actually create this video. And stop and think a lot. Yes, it's, it's caused us to really stop and think, that's exactly right. Um, we're not as young as we once were. And that, <laughs> we've come to that realization that there comes a time in everyone's life, just like the Bible says, there's a time and a purpose for everything. So with Wanda and I, we have decided to stop and think. It's time for us to evaluate some things. And so we wanted to invite you guys. We're going to tell you some of the things we're going to stop and think about and a ask you the question, what about you? Yeah, because right now the tensions in the world yeah. are rising. Uh, as y'all well know, here a week or so ago, we all woke up to the fact that overnight we had bombed Syria. Um, I sensed that that was going to happen. I didn't go online and say anything about it, but I did sense that it was going to happen. I told y'all to start preparing because there is a course of events of things that I believe not only are, are, are prophetic, but that are beginning to unfold uh, in the eastern part of the world. And that is leading us up to what could be some pretty serious cataclysmic events. Now, one of the things that Wanda and I look at on a daily basis is the DEF CON warning system. I like to know where we're at as far as the DEF CON warning system. Now, the DEF CON warning system uh, works in five stages, five being the least, one being the worst. Uh, right now, we are in the United States are at a DEF CON 4. Uh, with that, that means, though, that things can change fast. Things could change overnight. But As a matter right of fact, it's on a mild. we're 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 at four right now, so that's not real bad, but it's not the best because five being the best. Yeah. So we there is somewhat of an escalation at this point. Now with what's going on with North Korea, that could change in a moment's notice. Yeah. Kim Jong Un could he could do something stupid at any moment, or we may just decide to do a preemptive strike. Yeah. And should we do that, I'm sure the DEF CON system will raise quickly. Now, if you want to know what the DEF CON system is, there is a YouTube channel out there that's called DEF CON Warning YouTube. You can subscribe to that and it will notify and set your notifications up. It will let you it will notify you when there is a new DEF CON warning uh, system comes up. Now the next one is, when did I tell you, is not scheduled till uh, May, May the 2nd mm -hmm. to so go up. So they update like once a month? They update once a month unless there is something happening then it goes off automatically and warns you. But now, doesn't the YouTube channel kind of keep you abreast? Does it do a once every day or does it no, just... No, it just does it once a month. Once a month? Yeah, okay. it does a once a month update. But should something start happening, um, then you know you would be notified immediately because it would warn you. Now, with this, taking all this into consideration... With my health... With Wanda's health the... this past week, um, my health... Yeah. This has opened mine and Wanda's eyes to... Um, we need to stop and think about some things. Yep, and what was the first one? The first thing we need to think about is what are we going to do if all of a sudden something happens and we have health crisis? And God blessed us that mine was not serious. It's something that can be dealt with and we can handle it. I'm not yeah. on any medications, so my issues were covered in all that series of tests they did. Uh, I should be a reasonably healthy woman with just watching what I do. Yeah. Danny, on the same hand, takes no meds. Take no meds. Uh, he has to watch the gluten issue and things like that. A lot of things I have to and watch, just like Wanda. Your back. 
And my back, see, I, we didn't say anything, but we wanted to come home Monday. We went back for another test on her gallbladder. Well, Tuesday, we, no, Monday, after we, we went for the gallbladder test, we went through town and we picked up all of our feed and stuff for our animals because this was our monthly run. We were supposed to go to the grocery store actually Friday and we didn't make it. We didn't make it. We ended up in the hospital, so we had to do it Monday. Well, come home Monday because of Wanda's condition, I never asked her to help me unload anything. Yeah. I went out to the barn. There was ba many bags of feed and stuff like this that we buy for a month. And they're 50-pound bags, and usually Danny and I do them together because neither one of us are that strong. Right. So we take... We a help each together. other with the bags, putting them in nothing. But because Wanda's help, I didn't ask her, and I reached and grabbed all these bags up and threw them over in these barrels and didn't think anything about it. Well, Tuesday, my back went out on me, yep. and here I am today with a severely messed up back again. And sometimes it lasts me for up to a month. And I he's have having to, to take it easy. He can yep. move and do as long as he watches how he does it. Because he's had this issue before. I've had this happen before. So many times. Many times. And But that's the point we're trying to make to y'all. Is in the event that something happens, your health is, a big, is one of the biggest things you're going to face. Now let's say, for instance, you're a diabetic or you have to have medication for all kinds of things. Maybe it's blood sugar. Maybe you have a blood sugar issue. What is an alternative to say, let's see, what's a blood sugar medicine or a glucopodge? Let's say, for instance, you're taking glucopodge and you can't get it any longer. What are you going to do to keep your blood sugar leveled off? Well, I think now would be a good time to start diving into that and looking at natural alternatives. And I'll go ahead and tell you one that I helped my mother with, because my mother was a diabetic. Another That's di the reason he knows these meds. The reason I know some of these meds is because of my mother was a diabetic. Um, she had a blood sugar issue. If it's where you can get it, fresh okra, put in a pint jar full of water, put in the refrigerator overnight, you can drink that okra water the next morning, and it will normally level your blood sugar out. I gave it to my mom. My mom's was running somewhere in the 400 range and if she didn't her take sugar. her medicine and it brought it down to about 90. But there but, again, she couldn't get But she could not keep enough fresh time. okra all the time to do it. Yeah. But that's another movie for another time. But that's an example. That's an example. Find a, find a natural way to counteract what's going on if you have yeah. high blood pressure find a, a natural way it may not do what the meds do and you may have to live with some issues with some issues yeah but try to find something so that's our number one thing is help and our how, help. how you would deal with it because people say oh if there's a list and i've taught this before on my youtube channel there's a list for surviving you know you got to have water you got to have food you got to have shelter you know which one of these is the most important look I don't care about any of those things. Your health is number one because without your health, the rest of them don't matter. Exactly. Because you're not going to make it, you know. So, so let's just be honest about it. But stop. Stop and think. Don't freak out if something happens. Just start stopping and thinking. Okay, what do I need to do here? Now, the first thing we talk about is medical. Your medical issues. That's something that you really need to take those into birds consideration. Are really... Yeah, the blue jays are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. They're all mating right now. It's springtime. Everybody's the, the animal They're kingdom's crazy. all happy. Um, but you know, secondly, let's stop and think about water. Mm -hmm. You know, where do I live at? Do I live where I'm gonna be able to get water? And Danny and I do. We happen to we're, live. We're lucky enough to have a, number one a, a well that we can hand pump. Yep. Number two, a live stream. We have a live stream on our property. If we had to boil water, we could. And but then even with that number three number three there's a live small creek within 300 yards of our house here so we could get more water if we needed it and the the creek is on uh property that no one no one lives on the property it is owned by a it's company club, land yeah it's just company land but at least there's not going to be people we have to fight over water with right. because it's not like it belongs to somebody that's living next door to us right. so we're we're okay with so that. You know, that's one of the things you need to think about is, is water. You can't last more than a few days without water. Mm -hmm. 
you know so that's that's going to be your next priority is you're going to need to start start thinking about that and then you know the next thing i'm not going to go into that because that's a whole nother video for a whole nother time about water and how you get it and what you do with it and everything but stop and think stop about and think about it another thing is your food system mm -hmm. what are you going to do about your food system a lot of people say i can't stock up and i can't do but can you grow something even in apartments even in whatever can you grow something in the windowsills somewhere containers it's i mean it, containers on your little if it ain't deck nothing but a porch, milk jug with a top uh, cut out of it and granted that's not going to give you something to eat every day but right think about it danny and i were trying to get to a place where we have something fresh every day on our place and we're getting there um we wrote down what we have for april what we're going to be eating in april yeah that comes from our place start a journal yeah a monthly journal now we may not eat like we usually do that was one of the things so one of the things that wanda and i had to sit down and come to the con conclusion of this morning was that should a life-changing event take place um, and there were no food in the stores to go back and get, uh, you know, we're not going to eat like we eat now. You're going to have to learn that you're going to have to ration and you have to cut back. And, and let me start right now with, uh, while Wanda was in the hospital, I actually got to talk to an older person about this very subject here. And they were telling me that uh, back during the uh, the great right after the Great Depression and the World Wars was going on in the forties in the forties mm -hmm. that uh, each child in the family was issued a a, a voucher, mm -hmm. and on that voucher you were only allowed so much th that child could have a certain amount of sugar that they could purchase with that voucher. You, uh, flour, you know, different things uh, that was classified as commodities during that time. It did not matter how much money you had. No. You were not allowed to purchase more than that. You learned to live within whatever those vouchers were. Now, they told me that when you went to the store, that's what you could purchase when you went to the store because you were not allowed to have any more than that because food during that time was being rationed out. To cover everybody, it, yeah. it wasn't like just because I can afford 50 pounds of flour, I'm going to get it. No, you no. were allowed five pounds a month or whatever. You were allowed to have whatever the government says you it. were allowed to have. And there is nothing that says that that can't happen again. Yeah. And well, with us talking about that and thinking about that, and with the conditions in the world escalating like they are now, and say, for instance, some life-changing event took place and there was no more food uh, in the stores uh, and the government began to ration out, you know, are you going to be one of those that's going to end up going out there having to sit in long lines? Because see here where we live at, when Katrina came through, now I didn't have to do this, but Wanda, did. Wanda did. You sat in lines for hours. She and said, I'm talking all day. Now, you, you told me that you went one afternoon and sat all night in a car just to be able to see somebody by dinner the next day to get yes. something. We stayed, um, we, you had to go like the night before, park in a parking lot, wait in your car all night, and then get in line. And it was still lunchtime because we were some of the first couple of 300 people to get there. Yeah. And we still did not see anybody until nearly lunch. You're talking waiting for long, long periods of time in humidity and heat that was tremendous. Tremendous. 100 degree Katrina. temperature after Katrina sitting down here. Now, so, this was an isolated event, though. Yes. Now, suppose this had been a national e event. You know, there's no guarantee that the lines will even be there. Yeah, um, and there's no guarantee there'll be something to get once you get there. Yeah, because there were lots of people that sat in line for for almost a whole day, and when they got up there, the food was just gone. Yes, and you take that chance. But what would you do? Here, we have st we started an inventory of what Danny and I would do, because we do have storage. Yeah. But some people don't. Some people don't. But even though we have storage, we're trying not to depend on just that. Um, just right now, 
what we are doing now is we have mulberries, uh, dewberries, strawberries, and huckleberries. Okay, if that's the, all the candy you get, then hey, that's, that's awesome. You got candy. That's yeah. something that will keep you alive. But on top of that, we've had lettuce for the last month that I'm still eating on. I still have lettuce and will for another week or two. It's getting pretty hot, but it's still there. We planted carrots in the fall, and we're we've been still eating, eating those carrots, and yeah. we still we're have. We're gonna leave them in the ground till they're all gone. We're just gonna eat on them. Yeah, I planted radishes. Radishes grow in 30 days. Yeah. So I'm eating radishes now. Uh, We've taken all our peppers out of the greenhouse, but when Danny did last week, he brought in the last of the peppers that were on them. So we're finishing up the last of our um, bells and Marconis, Marconis I think, yeah. that we had left. Um, our English peas, they're starting to make. They're we starting to make. We ate our first. a handful this week. We ate our first batch last night with new potatoes. And that's the second batch of new potatoes we've yeah. had. So our food, even if we don't, store or prepare for the future with potatoes and English peas. We can't eat daily if but, we but have that's, to. That's the point we're trying to make at this right here is Wanda and I are trying to design our homestead. We're at this point now because we've come to this realization the way the events in the world's going and our health is changing. We are coming fast. Y'all keep asking me the question, what should I do? Well, I'm fixing to tell you what we're doing. Now, I'm not saying this will work for you, but I'm going to tell you what we're doing. What Wanda and I have done is we have started a journal for every month of the year, from January through December, we have begun to write down what is fresh on our property for every month of the year, and then we're breaking that down into weeks, and we're going to be breaking that down into days, because what we are after here, this is our goal, is that in the event there is no food to buy on any shelf that we can walk out the door of this house and walk onto our piece of land somewhere and we can find something that is growing fresh at that time to eat. Now it may not be what we want but the bottom line is God put us all in specific parts of the country and in that part of the country God has given each person each landscape what people in that climate need to survive that climate. Mm -hmm. So what Wanda and I have done is here we're not trying to grow things here that are tropical or things that are that grow way up north because that's not what is intended for our region. We've not been put in that region. We've been put here in the deep south. We're looking for things that grow naturally here in the deep south and grow very easy here in the deep south. And that is what our body requires yeah. to have at that time. And what we've done is we've looked. Yeah, I, granted, I have my herbs and stuff, and we do have some different things we experiment. But collards grow here. We're still eating collards. We're, we're eating collards, yeah. We butchered rabbits and chickens last month, and we have those growing. So rabbits and chickens, something. But what? What if we don't have? It? What if we don't have that? Well, we have squirrel here wild squirrel we have rabbit we have deer mm -hmm. you know there's we have turkeys i mean there's all these wild animals around around us around where, us where, now where you're at there may be something different it, it may be totally different it may be elk it may be moose it may be caribou i mean it may be bear whatever mule deer um antelope you know there's even beaver beaver <laughs> uh bison i mean you know it there it may doesn't be doesn't matter but it doesn't matter but where you live know what's available know what's available and fix it on your homestead so that even if you're in a even if you're in a neighborhood learn your neighborhood learn where things grow in your neighborhood um i noticed uh, melanie from road from the farm mm -hmm. she talks about how they go along the roadsides and gather wild asparagus i mean there's places that wild strawberries grow wild asparagus um all, all kinds of and like nutritional here, food dandelions grow just weeds yeah. we don't pay them any attention but a lot of people eat dandelions yeah so we have dandelions we have poke salad we have smilax vines all these things can be ate yeah if you want them so we don't think that we'll lack of green stuff this time of the year this no. ha this time of the year we will have something even if we don't have any canned goods in our cellar we can grow something this time of the year and there's yeah. stuff in the woods 
Yeah, we actually had a gentleman by here who's a who's a YouTube subscriber. He follows us. He lives probably two hours north of us. He was telling me he's already got two inch apples on his trees. You know, so and ours is just blooming. Ours are just now blooming. So I mean, that just goes to show you the differences just in two hours away. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed. Um, a real good educational video would be Homestead Mama's got one up with Robbie right now about yeah. about the differences just a few hours can make living apart as far as different breeds of chickens and and how that um, heritage breeds and stuff like that and uh, about how they can survive and, and stuff. I mean, it's just a great video. And, and take that to plants. The same thing to plants and yes. also as to human life, y'all. Mm -hmm. If you develop the mentality that I can't do anything, then you're going to die. Let me just go ahead and say it. You're going to die. But if you'll stop and think yep. and say, you know what? Maybe I can do something. Maybe I need to look around me. Maybe I need to figure out what's in the wild around me. Maybe you do live in an apartment. Get out of that apartment. Walk down the road. Walk down the street. Look. You may what's... be the only person in that apartment that knows what's growing yeah. around. Because I used to live in an apartment. And I studied herbs 20-something years ago, but yet I knew what plants were. I knew what they were. Yeah. If something had have happened while I was in my apartment, I might would have been the only person in that whole neighborhood that could identify trees and plants. Exactly. So don't say you can't do Don't something. say you can't. I mean, Study. Know what you're getting into, but yeah. find out. And look, you may live where you walk down the street, there's pecan trees all down the high on the roads and, and you know pecans will last almost a year in the hole. Yeah. You know. If you don't take them out. If you don't take them out of the hole. I mean and now they'll get a little too. they'll get a little rancid, but but they're still edible. Yeah, other nuts too. Other nuts. Pecans uh, just what we Walnuts, have. hickory nuts, all these kind of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Look at those things. In the fall, you might be able to walk around and gather them up by the bagfuls and just keep them in your house, and you might just munch on them all year because I'll be honest with you, one of the things with my health that I have found out is that a handful of pecans or one cup of pecans a day is the same thing as taking a multi, a one-day multivitamin, and that's what I do now. I eat almost a cup of pecans every day. And it takes the place of all the other things that's missing in my system. And plus, it keeps me regular. My going to the restroom is extremely regular. So, that's a blessing. So, the point we're trying to make is, you know, permaculture. Everybody yeah. asks me, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing here at Deep South Homestead. If you saw our video, um, I'm, I'm I doing showed permaculture. All, the, all the different things we have going on. Yeah. But not everybody has that. So one thing we want you to know is, even if you don't have a lot of money, you can go to discount grocery stores or, or, or look around in your own grocery store. Yeah. They have a dollar aisle. They got a dollar look, aisle. Ro look. Roman noodle, Roman, I don't even know how you said it. Romaine Roman, noodles. Whatever it is, yeah. they are dirt cheap. If that's all you can afford, stack you some packs of those. They'll get you last some boxes forever. of them. You They're get two or three dollars a box. You know, things like that will work. Canned, yeah, canned goods will goods, last a whole year. Um, Whatever it takes, but yeah. have something that you can have some nutrition. Uh, dry, dried beans, dried beans, rice. dried potatoes, uh, potato flakes, uh, all that kind of stuff will last probably you know I don't know what a year. Probably, but rice. Okay, a bag of rice, uh, average bag, less than two bucks. If you go to the grocery store this weekend, why not pick up a bag of rice? And yeah, just keep it up. You throw know, it in. two dollars. You buy that in cokes. Yeah. And. Cut back on what you do with your cokes and your eating out, and take that money and designate it to, as yes. your uh, go-to for adding things to your stash. I mean, that was that would be my first thought is to cut out the extras and put that money toward my stash. Well, the bottom line is this, y'all. It's not the end of the world. Okay, no. let me go ahead and tell y'all that. There's no way that that can possibly happen. But if you if you know anything about the Bible, you know that there's at least a thousand and seven more years left. Okay. Or thousand three and a half. Um, <laughs> or yeah, or thousand three and a half. We may already be three and a half years into this thing. But uh, but um, I'm not trying to say it's the end of the world because it's not. Nope. But what I am trying to tell you is, 
there could very well be some life-changing events here in the very near future that pops up because I do see some things happening that is prophetic and y'all have always asked me Danny if you see or know something tell me well take this as a warning just be prepared. it's time to stop and think about where you're at and what's going on with your help how much food do I have do I have a roof over my head of some kind? Am I where I can get to a roof over my head? And do I have water? Do I have water? Forget about organic right now. Organic is great when you can do it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to the simple fact that I've just got to have food in my system, because let me tell you something. In the event of a life-changing life changing event takes place, I know this from survival, it's all about calories. And I'm going to tell you why. This is why I tell you to stop and think. Because if you don't stop and think, the first thing that's going to happen to you is panic. Yep. When the human body goes into the panic mode, the, the, the <laughs> adrenal glands kick in. When the adrenal glands kick in, the body literally uses all of its available nutrients to overcome the adrenal rush. And when that happens and the adrenal rush is over, your body is now depleted. And you'll crash. And you will crash and burn. Now, the, that's why I tell you, stop and think. Because none of us are immune. Let me tell you something. As much as I know and as much as I have prepared, if I was to wake up tomorrow morning and realize that we are at full-scale nuclear war, First thing we're gonna do the is first panic. thing you're going to do is start to panic. Yep. Your heart rate's going to go up, all this kind of stuff. Your mind's going to start racing. You're going to start running around like, the old, what's the old adage, a chicken with his head cut off. And you're going to wonder about everybody you're gonna start, everything. You're going to start saying, oh my God, my kids, my this, my parents, my, my that. Stop. So, Stop at that moment right there and think. Because you're only responsible for one person, and that's you. And if you're married, you're responsible for you and your spouse. If you've got children, you're sparing, you're, small children, you're responsible for you, your wife, and your small kids first. Mm -hmm. You decide what you're going to do for your immediate family. Um, so that's what we're trying to tell you right now. Take time. Stop. Think. Don't panic. Take into consideration the things that we've told you today because that's why we're doing this video is because I see a need for something to be done extremely quick because I, th I feel like things are beginning to escalate now and you've always asked me, like I said a while ago, if I see something or if I feel like there's an urgency to tell you, well, this is Danny telling you I feel that urgency. And it doesn't mean that it will happen, but there is... There's a high possibility that something could that, happen pretty and soon. So just stop and think and, and stop, evaluate. Stop, think, reevaluate your situation. Mm -hmm. We love y'all. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you later. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.